up to school. Might have a meeting. The weather's already changing. I don't know if it's actually changing, but you can tell. Normally it's really hot around this time in August. Right now it's kind of like it's really nice temperature, but it's worrying for summer. Need to get out on my bike. This is perfect biking weather. I do need to get out on my bike. Just leaving school, I'm gonna head home for a second, and I might head into work, or I might keep working on some school work at home. We'll see. You stay here. Don't go outside. You're gonna be stuck outside. Go lay down. Go to bed. No, not going out right now. It's too late. Instead, I'm going to talk about something. See this shirt I'm wearing? It's Hackaday. I've talked about them before, their website where people build various things and they, it's like a, it's like a news like blog type thing where they'll, they will post other people's projects. So I've been on there a few times and they also have another site called hackaday.io and basically this was a place where you could post your projects and keep them up to date and things like that. Well just recently and I believe last year they had something called the Hackaday Prize, and this year it was a lot bigger. The prizes were huge. I think there was like a prize for $193,000 or something. Anyways, I had a project in that that had a pretty good following. I think it had a pretty good chance. There was one problem though. I didn't find any time to work on the project over the summer. I had submitted the project to the site and to the contest and basically at a point where I had a concept model, circuit board and design of what I wanted to build a physical piece but not working in the sense that you were able to do what it was going to do. And what I was working on was an open source glucose monitor and that's for people who are diabetic and want to test their blood sugar like me. So to be considered for the prize and get past the first stage, you had to enter in the project and then you had to show progress updates and make a video, which is ironic because I'm making a video about it right now. But over the course of the summer, I didn't have enough time. I was doing school, work, doing the vlog and photography, you know, things that like keep, keep me sane. And I just wasn't able to find the time or the resources really to develop it further money is obviously another factor. So by not updating those or making a video or doing anything like that, I wasn't able to make it to the next round, which sucks. But I'm going to show you the project now, what I was working on. Okay. Ah. So here it is. This is what I was submitting to the Hackaday Prize. It's the open source non-invasive glucose meter. The way this works is that it uses light shine from one side, this side, different wavelengths of light, and then is picked up by a sensor on the other side. And what happens is you shine this through your skin, say here or on your earlobe is what been commonly used and what happens is there's a law it's going to sound a little bit scientific but it's called the Beer-Lambert law which is about 
different types of light and how well they pass through a fluid or liquid and how fast they dissipate. And the dissipation happens by what's within that fluid and where the light is absorbed. So certain wavelengths are absorbed by water more greatly, so it'll only make it so far through water. And things like glucose are absorbed at also different rates. So I'm not going to get exactly into all the science of it, but basically there's a green LED, a red LED, an infrared LED, and a near-infrared LED, which is 1550 nanometers. The other ones are like 550, 650, and 950 nanometers. That would be green, red, and IR. So, what happens is, when you shine these different wavelengths through, they all have a different purpose. Some of the wavelengths are set to determine how much skin is in the way, and then another set is to determine how much blood is between this gap when you put it on your skin, because you don't know that because it's, there's different skin thicknesses, there's different uh, volumes in here which are constantly changing, and then finally you have the 1550 which once you know the volume of how much fluid is there, blood, then you can determine how much glucose is in the way by how much light gets through and, absor and how much light is absorbed by the glucose. Sorry if this is a little bit technical, but I have to explain it. So, by taking all those different readings and then comparing them to readings done by a regular glucose sensor, then what you can do is you can develop an algorithm that's able to correlate those readings to actual blood sugar. And there have been studies that have done this already but nothing that is open source, nothing that is small, and really it was done in an academic way, which means it'll never be publicly available like I want this to be. It'll be in some journal, and that's it. There'll be no devices, no hardware for anyone to get their hands on, and that's kind of what I want to happen. So basically, why is this necessary? Well, if someone wants to know their blood sugar, they need to prick their finger, get a sample of blood, and use a test strip, which is currently the most accurate way to get your blood sugar level. The problem with this is it's expensive, it's wasteful, and it's really annoying. So, the expensive part. Test strips, on average, each one, I'm pretty sure the average cost of a test strip, which means it goes up from there and it goes down from there a little bit, 40 cents. So each time you want to know your blood sugar, which is something dependent on how healthy you are, or if you're in danger of being low and passing out, or if you're really high, these are things people with diabetes want to know. They want to be healthy, just like everyone else. So, every time you want to know if you're healthy, you have to pay some company 40 cents. And I know there's health insurance, but the money's coming from somewhere. A company is getting paid every single time, doesn't matter where the money's coming from, for you to do this. And then if you think about the people that aren't able to afford health insurance, people that aren't able to pay this amount every single time, or as often, they're obviously not going to be as healthy, and their lives are going to be not as good as other people's lives, which kind of sucks. So when you have something like this, which is 100% reusable, and can be made for like, this is just electric, well, you can make anything for like a dollar when it's mass produced. So, one of these, you know, you sell them for like 20 bucks or something, that's I'm sure what will happen, then they can use it, they can not waste a test strip, and the average person can afford it. So, let's take a look at this system. What I have here, it's got a little buzzer on it, and right now, I don't know, I haven't programmed this thing in a long time, but basically what I, the idea I had was that 
this would like communicate Bluetooth to your phone or something like that and you would just like press the button to take a reading and it would tell you when it's done but I know that it's actually doing some kind of measurement that I was probably testing in the midst of doing this anyways what did I design on this well everything so it is an Arduino base platform I designed these two circuit boards which as you can see these are the LED side and through this here's the other side this is an indium gallium arsenic photodiode and uh, that's what picks up the light there may need to be some changes there it's just got a battery charger and a lipo battery I just really went all out with proving that it's got a small form factor and it's got several different LEDs here and I also designed the case this is a case 3D printed at Shapeways, my favorite 3D printing site so I designed this little mechanism and the two boards mount to it pretty well so that's where I'm at right now and I've had a lot of people email me about it asking to help with the project and asking to help with data collection and asking to buy one of these because they think it's working that's what happens when you put something publicly on the internet you can't describe everything but a lot of people just see it and suddenly their hopes get up that this miracle thing is out there that's going to change their lives. At this point, that's not the case. I'm looking for... Basically, I need time and money to do the project. And those two go hand in hand because I'm working to make money, which takes away time from doing the project. And I can't have one without the other. But I'm not asking for money. Basically, I just want to get the project in a state where this is reading proper light levels I'm able to read measurements through skin not correlate anything not correlate the data to actual glucose levels but just to have the sensory system working and I think I can do that relatively soon but there's no promises on that the project hasn't fully been released online. I know it's open source, but it will be fully released. But something like this is just a little bit worrying because, well, one, it's not fully working, and it's hard to describe that to people. I don't want people to waste their hard-earned money building this and then find out that it doesn't work. Also, I'd like to get it to a certain point before I release it kind of for the same reason that the, expe the expectations are really high on something like this as soon as you say open source non-invasive glucose meter you start getting emails from everyone and they all want to contribute and I think that's amazing that so many people want to contribute but I was often just saying the project will be released online don't know when I've got to clean it up it's a big mess of files because it's like when I'm working on something I'm just powering through it. I'm not thinking about the organization for others. So that's that. And unfortunately I'm making this video after the Hackaday Prize expired. That's cool. I really didn't have time to put into it so that's just a consequence of my life. But I think it'll work out if this isn't feasible then we'll come up with something else and I think it's possible that there's something out there that's inexpensive and will replace the test strips and will take money away from these large corporations that are able to charge whatever they want because they're the only ones that supply it and bring that healthy lifestyle to people that aren't able to afford it because every year the population of illnesses increases it seems like for everything and if we don't get that under control there's gonna be a lot of problems so big long rant there's probably something else I wanted to say 
but this is my non-invasive glucose meter. Hopefully I'll get it online soon. Hopefully we'll get it working soon. Anyways, everyone, you know how this goes. Should all be good and have a good night.